Welcome to the Mistress Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up some Superl Guard for Shadespire. Hello, all right, so it's time to dive into the Sepulchral Guard for Shadespire. That's right, Sepulchral Guard. Now, I really like this box, especially this box, because I have a Legion, Legion of Nagash army, and this, I'm told, has some data sheets for it, so this way, some in the battle tomes, so this way I can actually use it and field it with my army so there's like a dual purpose i can use it for the game of shadespire and i can use it for age of sigmar so let's see what's in the box so you have these two very tasty sprues very delicious there with a lot of detail and those textured bases which are amazing when it comes to detail i add my own little thing to it so this way it can match my army but the fact that it comes with uh very very detailed bases are amazing you also get the cards you get ploy cards and objective cards all kinds of cards come in this package so you can use it now there are some cards you can use with any war band and then there's cards that are specific to this faction let's see how to build it now here is the little instruction booklet now these are created to be press fit so that means you just could snap it together put it together put it on the table and start playing so if you have no interest in painting whatsoever which i don't i don't understand that i'm the miniatures paintbrush Anyway, um, <laughs> you can start playing right away, but at the same time, uh, if you do want to uh, paint them, you can. Now, this can be a little tricky, but this is Games Workshop after all, so they take painting these miniatures into consideration while when putting it together with the pieces. They start thinking of, okay, so if somebody's going to paint this, would this be hard to paint? Would this be incredibly hard to paint? I guess, would it be frustrating to the point where people are not going to want to paint it? And, well, GW wants people to paint their models. I mean, they do have a paint range and paintbrushes and a whole bunch of hobby stuff that they do sell as well. And I'm sure they don't want sales to drop. So, yeah, they do encourage you to paint this stuff. And it looks so much better on the table. So, I'm going to start here with... Uh, some Steinal Res Primer, and I'm painting everything black. That's right, I'm just starting with a base of black, and I could have started any other way, but since I started my army with black, um, with the other skeletons in which I painted, I want to keep that consistency. Plus, it all well worked out well anyway. Just like this guy right here, this Hex Wraith that I painted about a year ago, um, I want to make that same kind of gradient with the purple and I want to, you know, integrate it with the green if possible. So I'm going to use the same formulas in which I did back then in order to create the same kind of consistency so it fits in, fits in the army well. And you may be asking yourself, well, why purple or green? Well, First, purple is my favorite color. It's my birthstone color. It's something I wanted to do. And this is the first army, uh, Age of Sigmar army that I have ever made. So I wanted it to represent me and purple just came, came to mind when it came to building and painting these models. I just love that color. But I also want it to be a little bit sinister. So why not fade it into the black? So I decided to prime them black and then go and paint the tips with purple or a lighter gradient of said purple, uh, getting really light on the tip and just spraying it with the airbrush. And I, I really do love the transitions you easily get with an airbrush. Now, you can do this with a brush. It just takes a longer amount of time. And time is the only commodity you don't get back. So I kind of don't want to waste it. So if I can do things quickly and easily, I am going to do it. If there are any shortcuts out there to my goal, believe me, I'm going to take it. Because I spend hours upon hours downstairs. And my poor wife is upstairs. I mean, she allows me to do this. But um, 
Yeah, that's not fair to her if I'm spending additional time when I don't need to uh, <laughs> while hobbying, you know? So yeah, cut those corners. Don't be a, a hobby widow and <laughs> save your marriages, people, and um, spend the appropriate amount of time downstairs and uh, do things around the house and uh, make your wife happy because happy wife, happy life, you know what I mean? And if you don't, I'll pray for you. Alrighty, so let's get back to painting. Again, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the process. This is more of a paint and chat video. So you can see which paints I'm using right there. Bone white, my, one of my favorite colors to use, one of my most often used colors to be honest. Um, so if you want to get the paint by paint tutorial kind of thing, just look at the video. Uh, but this is more of a painting chat, just me kind of sitting cozy, getting cozy with you and uh, painting up some minis and um, you could paint yours any way you want to. And the reason why this is more of a painting chat than a tutorial is because that cape could be red. That cape could be any color you want it to be. It doesn't have to be purple. This is my favorite, so this is what I did. And I'll show you what I did within the video. So I do want to let you know how I accomplished my goals, but you do definitely do not have to follow a paint by number kind of tutorial style in order to achieve this goal. You can do it with any color. Uh, that being said, I was really excited. About a year ago, I heard this game was going to come out and I was super excited about it because here I was getting into the hobby, a little bit intimidated by the amount of models that I needed to paint and I'm wanting it to have a certain type of quality when I paint. I want it to be above tabletop. I don't, I don't, whatever tabletop means to you, but above that, I'm talking about, you know, kind of want to getting it to the, the box art kind of style or somewhere around that quality or maybe even pushing it to the next level a little bit. Uh, so borderline display. And um, that's where I want it to be. So I did whatever I, I possibly could to push my painting in order to get to that level. Is it necessary? No, none of this is necessary. I mean, it's art. You paint it how you feel you want your miniatures to look, not how someone else decides they wanted the miniature to look. So, I mean, this hobby is a fun hobby. If you're not having fun, you're in it for the wrong reasons and um, you're not gonna really stay with it. So make sure you're having fun. One thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, art for art's sake. If you love art and if you have a creative side and you have the need to create, don't let anybody tell you, oh, you're not good enough. What the heck with that? You know, you are having some fun. This is your thing. I mean, there's some, there is definitely some uh, amount of zen when it comes to painting because you kind of get in a zone and you're kind of focused on a thing and, and um, all the all the worries and stress of your day, your work day kind of melts away. Now, some people use healthy and unhealthy ways in order to kind of escape reality and go into their own little world. And, you know, um, this I find peaceful and you just... Mentally, it just brings me to a place where I'm calm and peaceful. And you know, those health and mental health benefits are definitely tremendous in this hobby. So quickly, I wanna go back to what I am doing on the screen. Right now, I have some Nidatite, or well, a lot of people call it green stuff. Now, this is originally a plumber's tool to kind of like patch up you know, pipes, so this way they're not leaking. So it's waterproof, you mold it, it dries, it, it sets hard uh, as, well, I, I would say maybe a stone. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly, but you know, you can sand this stuff. And the one thing that I encounter uh, tremendously with these press fit models, these easy to build models, are gaps. I do find gaps and you have to fill in the gaps. Now I use green stuff in order to do so. And I'm playing around with a little, lot of different textures when it comes to green stuff because I have some milliput in which I mix in with that sometimes to make, you know, get the properties of the milliput which are soft and grainy and then get the, the stickiness of the Nita type green stuff. So this way it's malleable and workable without having to dip my tool into water every second because 
green stuff, I don't know, it likes to soak up the water. I, I, that's what I think, because every time I put water onto it, it works for just, a, there's a small window of time in which that works that you can actually knead it without having the tool getting stuck to uh, the green stuff, uh, knead a type, and pulling it back up where you don't want it. So this is the first time kind of, you know, sculpting on the model even after it's painted a bit. And I'm not too worried about that because there's primer on it. So once that dries, and I do allow it you know, 24 hours to dry, I'm gonna paint over that with more black primer and then start the process of painting on top of that. But I did notice those gaps and I just could not leave it that way. I couldn't do it. Some things about these easy to build models, these press fit models, if you want a certain quality and you don't want big honking gaps in your model, well, maybe I don't think it's that easy to build. It reminds me of Zinj. If you've ever built some Zinj, you know about gaps. It's just Zangors, it's all I need to say. For those of you who play Zinj, you know what I'm talking about. All right, <laughs> but this is sort of like that. And it's a little bit frustrating because I kind of want, like if I build a model, I kind of want the fit and finish of the model to be of high quality standards where you don't have gaps. All right, something to help me with this Nidotype in order to fill in these gaps uh, is a sculpting Vaseline, which I got from Green Stuff World. Now, if you're in the US, Green Stuff World doesn't really have a United States uh, website where you can order. You can actually order in the U, I, no, in Spain, I believe it's located in Spain, and then have them ship it over. But shipping and handling, uh, yeah, I, I'm completely avoiding that. But the thing that they do have is uh, eBay store. Now, you may want to check that out. Check them up on eBay. And I cannot, I don't think I can put the link down, down below, but I'll try if I can um, with eBay. But it's, it's pretty amazing uh, that uh, you can get that stuff on eBay. And it's an eBay store. I don't, I don't believe they're doing auctions, you know, as per se. It's not really an auction in which you buy it. But they put, it's just a store where you can just purchase stuff there. And I find that, you know, the shipping and handling cost, and I don't know how they do this, is a lot cheaper. So I, I don't know what kind of miracle or magic they're working over there on eBay, but um, it just seems a lot better. Now, last time I ordered from them, it did take an extremely long time for the items to arrive i think about two months and so i mean be aware of that i don't know if that's just my experience some people say they didn't have that experience um but that was my experience so be aware that some of the items may take longer than you know priority now and that is if you want to shave on, save on shipping which is the point of going to the ebay store saving on shipping you know uh so if you're willing to wait for what you want and you're you're patient enough to wait for what you want you, there's savings to be had there if you ever need um some sculpting vaseline they have rolling pins which are amazing uh for texture and you know, uh, they have these leaf punches, which also, they have some scatter leaves, which I picked up, uh, which are birch seeds. Yeah, birch seeds. If you take birch seeds and dry them, they, they look like small little leaves, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to have to do a tutorial on that, which is really, really cool, because you just take some seeds out, you put them in a little plastic bag, you leave them in the sun for a little while, they dry out done you have yourself little mini leaves it looks pretty cool but those hole punches not to discount you know take away anything from those hole punches that that green stuff worlds put out they're amazing because they're actually dot like cut sort of like cookie cutters for really small leaves and they get pretty precise so uh, if you have a some people do it with an actual leaf where they cut it out and it actually looks like a maple like you get that consistency now the only problem is having consistency in my opinion if you have a leaf none of them should really look exactly alike because you know it's not really natural i mean you get similarities but not exactly alike so that's what i think when it comes to leaves that's why i stick to the birch seed uh dried birch seed which i actually purchased 
All right, let's take a look at the base. There's some style res. I'm going to some gray over here. And I'm just graying up the base. Just trying to... I looked at the base of the, my army and just trying to replicate the theme within that. Now, I say theme loosely only because I'm using the same colors, uh, but you know I can actually have quite a few items that are different in there, but some of the things that tie it together. And that's just it when it comes to bases. When you're creating bases, you don't want everything to be so uniform. Because if you look out in nature, you're gonna see a lot of different patterns. If you're walking in the forest, no two parts of the forest are looking exactly the same. They all look different, but they still have the scatter. They still have the same type of leaves. They still have the same type of elements, but they're all different. And that's what you want to include on your bases. You have a general theme, but at the same time, there are elements in which ties all of them together. Um, all right, time for some white here. And uh, just creating streaks and giving some highlights onto those bones, uh, extreme highlights that are on these highly detailed bases. Man, I know I've said it before, but I really love these highly detailed bases. I think they're amazing that it comes with the kit. That I like. The way the fit and finish of the press fit models, it's lackluster in my opinion. It still needs a little more work, but it serves its purpose. It's sort of like the snap type models I used to build when I was a kid. Um, although, you know, my family members and my co-modelers uh, who were scale modelers as well, they shunned the fact of snap type, saying that it was too easy. So I didn't build too many snap type models because that was that was baby stuff they told me. So I you know now, uh, in retrospect, was it easy? Yeah. Um, was it bad for a beginner? No, it was perfect for a beginner, so I don't know why <laughs> I was told to do something different. It was actually, you know, something I should have done. But I learned a lot by doing the harder level models. Um, and I, I learned that stuff then, and I'm applying to stuff that I learned then, now. And for me, that's pretty amazing because it's not wasted knowledge. You didn't waste your time as a kid learning how to do this stuff all to never do it again. You see, this is what this is what I, I didn't like about video games like currently, because currently I hardly ever play video games and I was a die hard uh, video game fanatic and I hardly play video games anymore, uh, if ever, because I'm putting all this effort into something and sure I have uh, a lot of memories um, with playing you know with playing those video games and the stories all I have to say is Final Fantasy 7 wow that's great but the amount of hours grinding those characters so they can become of course level 90 now, you cannot I mean any JRPG you, you grind it out until you get to the top level and then the main boss comes there and you just slap him one <laughs> At least that's how I do, because I'm not very courageous when it came to those things. But nine, level 99, I reached the hours. I mean, I don't even know how many hours I spent on that thing. But right now, aside from the memory of the story, in which I can go on to YouTube and check out, by the way, um, what do I really have to show for it? Like, like, what do I have? I didn't save the game. Like, I saved the game, but I didn't save the the actual disc. I mean, I don't know what happened to that thing. Probably worth some money now, but it, I really don't have anything to show for it. Now, here's the thing about painting models. If I paint... I painted a model in 2001. I still have that model. So what do I have to show for that effort? I have something physical. Something that's not going away. You know, so that part, like having a legacy, I would think, you know, having something to show for it, for me, that's really important. And that's why I like painting these uh, minis and doing these uh, kind of little, tiny little dioramas and, and really getting into this. Now, actually using them for war gamings as a social aspect, well, that's just, you know, that's just cherry on top of the whipped cream on top of the 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 ice cream <laughs> that's what that is that's just amazing you know um 
and which I have. I've been using my painted minis and going into my local gaming store and meeting some really cool people, uh, definitely cool people, which um, I hope one day to bring to the miniatures paintbrush where we can do battle reports, possibly build reports or something, uh, you know, something with conversion. So, you know, that's something down the road, you know, and uh, the miniatures paintbrush will be expanding which is my, my goal, you know, for it to, to just get larger and become like a community thing, really, you know, have a small little community of pe like-minded people who, um, who just, you know, love those around us, love thy neighbors. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. But uh, having like-minded people with the same kind of values uh, really... Um, enjoying each other's time and enjoying something that's you know productive instead of something that just absorbs time and then you have nothing to show for it uh, plus there's a lot of laughs now this year I'm hoping to go to the Nova open and uh, I'm gonna take some art classes there and just really um, learn some concepts and you know integrate it into my tutorials one of the concepts here is called dry brushing and which is what I'm doing to, to pick out the highlights of the bone areas now when I dry brush it's not just regular dry brush I mean I make sure there is just about no paint left on that brush before I pass it in there so it's only picking out the highlights and I can get really precise with it all right some bootstrap leather um, just getting the leather bits there um, sorry about the focus of the camera it goes in and out just a bit I forgot not to manual focus like I left it on autofocus and it just it just went crazy on me <laughs> so you know I as much as I try to figure out every angle and make sure that everything is in place there's always something that you kind of forget it's the human element you know it's just Mistakes will happen. So sorry about if the, the camera goes out of focus, but you can see me bringing up each detail, just, just base layering the leather straps and the leather bits within there. Now, the one thing about the Sephora Guard that I really like, and, and skeletons in general, there's a lot of detail, yet there's not a lot of detail. What I mean by that is that you don't have to pick out every muscle because there's no muscle to pick out. You know, there's just bones. So you can dry brush a little bit to get the bone white, you know, reinforce the shadows, and yeah, you can play around with that. Once you're done with that, you know, even if you wanted to go for ultra smooth transitions and spend time on each bone, it's nothing like having, you know, a whole bunch of flowing ornaments and stuff. I'm thinking, you know, like high elves from uh, Warhammer Fantasy, which they have all these flowing robes upon robes and, and more ornaments and, and more. There's just so much accoutrement with them that, um, that you can get lost in it. Speaking of which, the Idanet Deepkin. Oh my goodness, the detail on that is absolutely amazing. It's it's gorgeous line, gorgeous, gorgeous line. Um, now, Marathi was cool when it came out for Medusa, but I wouldn't play like the army. I would more like get Marathi and maybe a couple of the snake uh, ladies and um, you know play for a D&D campaign or something like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't really play the army because um, aesthetically, yeah, they're they're cool, but they're not absolutely beautiful. Not absolutely beautiful. Like that war tortoise from the Idanet Deacon that it, it's it's a turtle but it's beautiful and the way they sculpted that thing is absolutely absolutely gorgeous and um, you know I really I really love it I have a friend that wants to get into Age of Sigmar I'm going to point them in the direction of the Idanet Deacon see what they think about that because I mean it's outrageously gorgeous it just it just is I mean I think I think they knocked it out of the park with that now the infantry on that one with the eyeless I, I don't know I don't know I don't know how to feel about that it's just like it looks like it's lacking detail in my opinion like there should be something more than just nothing in the eye sockets it just my opinion there it seems 
like they could have done more, like they created a shortcut. And yeah, some people do not like to paint eyes. And if you hate, hate, hate painting eyes, then that is definitely the army for you. <laughs> All right, time to, to bust out the silly putty and wrap everything off and just go for the shield. And um, I usually do the seal shield in sub-assembly, so I don't have to silly putty everything, but I really didn't have the option. I mean, this is... Um, easy to build, kind of snap fit model. So, I mean, the shield was just molded onto the hand. They didn't come separately. So, and when it does that, you have to take extra precautions like using uh, some kind of masking material. And this one I'm using Silly Putty. That's right, Silly Putty. So if you haven't used Silly Putty to mask off your uh, miniatures, you need to because it just molds and conforms to just about any surface uh, for a mini. It doesn't tear the paint off your mini, so it is amazing. You can be cautious and varnish your minis so it won't, you make sure that it doesn't tear off the paint. But I'm telling you right now, these models right here were not varnished before I put the silly putty on. And I just take the silly putty off and it's just fine. And so what I'm gonna do with the shields here, again, going with a the theme of going from purple and then going to that light violet, uh, that blue kind of violet color. And that is the theme for my army right there. Now, the reason for the green, green flames and ghostly green stuff is because, you know, that's the complementary color. That The complementary color of purple is green. If you look at the color wheel, they're right across from each other, you know, directly across from each other on the opposite end of the wheel, which means whatever color you put in there, it's going to pop and it's going to really, really show uh, through. All right, some copper with some pale burnt metal. I like to mix my, my true metallic metals because I want to create my own color and I usually put this in a wet palette but i didn't do it this time because metallic paints i don't know it's just metallic paints so i just kind of mixed it right there on my table which uh I, I do have to change that table uh i definitely have to change that that the the newspaper on that table and i will you know so that's gonna be a thing <laughs> Because that, that table's filthy. Sorry about that, folks. I didn't mean for you to look at a filthy table. But, you know, when you're a miniature painter, it, you kind of dirty your, your little place up a little bit, you know? This hobby creep is a thing, okay? Um, I'm trying to be conscious with that and doing a conscious effort. And some people are like, why? Why would you even bother having a conscious effort about hobby creep? It's just a thing. It's your area. Dirty it up. Who cares? Well, my friends have a little thing called OCD. So I have to make sure I don't lose things and keep things organized. Or if not, you know, I'm a hot mess. But so oddly, there are times where my desk just, the hobby creep is a thing and I have no more room to work in because I just have bottles and bottles of paint and clippers and everything in, you can imagine, thrown out in front of me. So this is what I do, guys uh, and girls, is when I finish for the night, before putting everything away, before putting, you know, going upstairs and, and just you know going and hitting it for the night I spend an extra half hour putting away everything everything must go away into its appropriate place so this way next time I'm going to build next time I'm going to paint I know exactly where everything is and it actually saves me time in the long run plus you have a workflow which is efficient and you know when you're efficient it feels so so good because if you're looking for a color and looking for a color and looking for the clippers and looking for toothpicks and looking for this and looking for that and looking for everything in between then you're gonna waste a lot of time so that that bit of an extra effort at the end of every session is well well worth it so I recommend that if you do want uh, to not lose your things to keep an organized desk and I wouldn't say punish yourself if you if you don't but at the same time the benefits are there if you do so it's totally worth it take some extra time before you end every single every single session first thing I do is check to see if I left the uh, the airbrush on 
<laughs> I have to shut off the compressor uh, because there have been times where I've left that thing on all night and water builds up in that sucker and it's gonna rust out the tank, you know? It's, it's just no good. It's just gonna ruin the life of your, uh, your compressor. So, and, and water builds up and it's just not good to have things under high pressure. Now I learned that with the water hose, you don't leave the water hose on cause it'll burst, you know? It'll just burst. You don't want that. You don't want that for your airbrush. You know, it's not water, but it's air and it's still pressurized. So yeah, no, that's just a bad thing. So before I go and go upstairs, I will hit the, um, I will hit the button on the top, the lever on the top for my airbrush, just to make sure it's off. And then I will put all the paints in the area. I leave them on my desk if I'm gonna use them again. So I don't put them back in their racks or anything like that. I'll leave them out, but I leave them in front of me in a row so I can see every color, so I can just pull on it easily. Then uh, what I do is I clear off any junk that needs to get off that table, and I'll put away the tools where they're supposed to be, at the arm's reach, everything is arm's reach, everything has a place, everything in its place, and it's just so much of a blessing when you are just you need a color, you know exactly where it is. You need a tool, you just pull it out from where it goes. It's just amazing to be able to do that. And again, worth every second of it. All right, so these are actually coming along, working with True Metallic Metals, shading it down, playing with all kinds of shades, or Serif on Sepia. And again, I am working with True Metallic Metals. Um, I'm working with True Metallic Metals and I'm starting to get away from the inks and starting to play around, but using inks instead of shades uh, for the metallic metals. But you know, I'm just learning, I'm playing around. And part of this hobby is playing around and not caring if it doesn't look great. I mean, honestly, if it doesn't look great, that's fine. I know exactly what I need to work on. It's not like I don't have another mini to paint, you know, and I can I can try it again and try it again and try it again. Not all the minis I've ever paint has come on the show. Let's just put it that way. Sometimes I paint the mini just because I want to paint the mini, not because I'm going to record it or anything like that. So, you know, and, and sometimes that's great because you're just creating art for art's sake. You're not creating it for, you know, to be judged or, or you know, to post and have people criticize. And you have to be careful. I mean, I, I think the community of miniature painters and builders and war gamers are amazing. But trolls are out there. And, you know, and bullying is a thing, unfortunately. You know, there are people who just want to see other people suffer because they're hurting inside. Because when you're hurt inside, you start trying to hurt other people. And it's sad. Like, I feel bad for those people that they have nothing better to do than to try to ruin someone's day. That is really sad, you know? And, uh, you know, somebody should just give them a hug or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Um, so... Don't worry about the naysayers. There are always going to be naysayers. And if you feel so, feel very conscious about your work, then don't post it. Don't feel like you have to post everything you do. You created it for you. This is a standard in which you are. This is the level in which you are. What things would you like to work on to get better? So for me, uh, creating rust effects like that, using using that kind of like that uh, verticris, in order to do that staining was something that I'm playing with. Like I put a lot on there and I didn't know if that's gonna be bad or good or what, you know, but I played around with it. So if I, well, I don't think you can really, honestly, I don't think you can ruin a mini because one, there's a thing called green stuff once you can peel it off, which I probably, I won't do. I, I really won't do because, you know, I wanna see my mistakes because I know exactly what to work from. And then, you know, like a year later, I come back and say, hey, remember when I thought this mini was amazing? Look at it now. Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? And if you can say that, that means you've improved, you know? <laughs> That's always a benefit. So I use it like a timeline. All my minis are a timeline. This is where I was at then. This is where I'm here now. And honestly, that's the only thing you can compare yourself to. Like you don't compare yourself to, you know, to Sam Wentz's work, 
Don't compare yourself to Gilderaz's work. Don't compare yourself to even Vince Venturella's work because they are really amazing painters. And if you want to paint exactly like them, first they, you go to the store, you buy your first mini, you get yourself some paints, you don't even thin them down, you just slop it on there, and magically you have an award-winning model. It doesn't work that way. It's not supposed to work that way. If, if it was really easy, then everybody would accomplish it, it'd get boring, and you'd move on to something more challenging. Like the human condition is to try to push yourself to the next level and, and feeling that achievement, you know, when you finish a model and you feel really good about it, that, that is what um, this hobby is about. It's not, it's not about you know, um, being a master painter, the first um, first model you paint, you know, it's not, even if you're, if you are playing the war game, if you're playing war games, if you are playing 40K, if you're playing AOS, if you're playing, I mean, Malifaux, if you're playing any, any skirmish and or war game, you're not gonna be a master statistician or master strategist master strategist or, or you know you're not gonna be a master of the game the first time you play that it just doesn't work that way um, you gotta go through some growing pains you're going to learn some stuff you're gonna have some scraped knees metaphorically but you got to learn you will learn how to ride that bike but you gotta have to fall a couple of times and and that's okay that's okay you go to paint some minis that are not gonna look great you need to be okay with that. Not only do you need to be okay with that, you need to embrace that and say, you know what, this is still art. This is my art. This is exactly where I am right now. And every time I paint another mini, I'm gonna take one thing, one thing and try that, that I didn't try on the first mini. I'm just gonna change that one thing at a time. Change happens when you do it in small increments over a period of time. Small and lasting change anyway, occurs when you make small changes over a long period of time. So my change, you know, is I challenge myself to do something, even if it's minuscule, like the first time ever using verdigris or um, using inks instead of shades to be able to create a, a true metallic metal effect or blending, two brush blending or dry brushing, a very light dry brushing or using a loaded blood, like there's all these techniques. Like every time I try a new model, it's like, hmm, okay. Now I'm gonna paint this model because I think it's really cool. Number one, I only paint things that I think are really cool. If I start painting something that I don't like, I, I tend to rush through it. I don't care, get it done, get it off my table because I don't even want to paint it anymore. So get it out of my face. <laughs> you know, I am so I'm merciless when it comes to that because, you know, <clears throat> I'm taking time away uh, from some other people. Like I'm taking time that I could be doing, like I could be, I could be watching a movie with my wife and just like laughing at something or, or just going for a walk or something like that. I'm taking that precious time that I'm not gonna get back and I'm doing this, it better be worth it. It better be worth it because it's it's not worth the sacrifice, it's not worth it. You're not gonna take time out of your life to do something you're not enjoying. Yeah, it makes no, to me that makes no sense, you know? Not to say that I don't spend time with my wife, um, I could always spend more, <laughs> but you know, I, you know, I like, I love it. I love spending time with my wife. I love spending time with my family. I love spending time with my, my stepson. I love spending time with, uh, you know, I am blessed. I am blessed. I, I really am. Um, I, I, a little bit about myself when I was younger, I, I just felt like I had just about no support system and no one. And I was kind of alone and now I'm surrounded by a whole slew of people that really love me for who I am and I couldn't be happier. So, you know, I take I take one day a week and, and I and I have like the the war gaming day or the you know I teach a painting class at my local um 
hobby shop and I do that, you know, every other week and every other week I play a war game because I want to be good at it and do battle reports for you guys and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, at night, you know, if I had a really stressful day, sometimes I go down there and I'll paint for three, four hours or whatever. Um, but some nights, you know, I'll just do one hour and all I'm doing is like, you know, green stuff with stuff, you know, or just working on leather and just putting a base coat down. Like, even if I get down there and just like gets the stress right out. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the sheen of this wood now on the screen. And I do want to point this out. I'm using Tester's Dull Coat. And that's right, the spray bottle of Tester's Dull Coat. But I decanted it and I actually put it um, in a bottle. <laughs> so I can actually brush on Tester's Dull Coat. And uh, I do have a link. I'm going to put a link up in the description, uh, the link up here. I'll put a card that you can actually decant it yourself. So check it out up here, okay? Alrighty. So yeah, I just, anyway. Uh, I should say paint and rant instead of paint and chat. Um, you know what? I'm going to open this up to you guys. You know, I like doing the painting chats and stuff like that, but I want you to ask questions. You know, if you can ask some questions, leave a comment down below and ask some questions. I'll, you know, I'll, be, I'll touch on a lot of different topics and, you know, and as long as this has something to do with a hobby or something, you know, hobby related or, you know, game related or something like that. Yeah, man, I'll, or a woman, I will talk about it. Yeah, so feel free to interact. Absolutely. If you listen to this on your car ride to work, then, you know, kudos for you, man. Uh, you know, I'm glad that I can join you on your commute. You know, if you if you listen to this uh, while you're hobbying, man, that's awesome. We're hobbying together, you know, <laughs> really, because this is just fun. Okay. I didn't want to do everything like a, a tutorial style because I felt that a little stuffy with the tutorial stuff, it's like, here's your prescription, you must take it this way. And it's not, it's not that way. I, and I can't really say, okay, now you need to use vertigris and cut it two parts water because the thickness of paint is different for everyone. I mean, even in, if it depends on the warehouse it was stored in, you know, when it was shipped, the humidity of your area, you know, the temperature of your house. There are so many different factors that'll change the consistency of your paint that you really can't do a ratio. You just have to get a feel for it. And how do you do that? Paint more miniatures and you get better at this stuff. <laughs> That's it, you know? All right. so. Uh, in order to clean the test with Dull Coat, I used alcohol. Uh, some people were asking about that. Uh, what do I use to clean it? Okay, time for that leaf litter that I spoke about earlier. Uh, if you don't know what leaf litter is, uh, again, it's birch tree seeds dried up. And I'm gonna add this to the base in order to create a little bit more flair. Uh, I do like that. And uh, also to match my army. So, so it has dual purpose here matching the army and adding flair so and i'm doing this with um just a cotton swab a very extra long one you can get this in a medical supply place and i use these sticks for a lot of things and i have quite a few of them so i kind of want to use them up and they have a lot of purpose to, purposes to them like i use them to mix paint uh in the cup of my airbrush and some people say, yeah, it's porous, it'll suck it, uh, suck up some paint. But really, honestly, I have never seen it do anything dramatic. And using the hard clippers right there, don't use your, your hobby clippers for that. Use some like Stanley tool or some, you know, some regular industrial kind of tool clipper to, to do hard stuff. But, you know, because you want to save those, those screw clippers for the screws and that's about it. So yeah, a lot of different purposes for those uh, those cotton swabs uh, with that long stick. I love them, I love them, I love them. All right, now for some leaf litter, which I'm gonna add to the base. Now I'm using a, uh, a clip there, I, I mean a uh, tweezer there, and that is meant for uh, decals. Vince Venturella, it's not decals, all right, man? It's decals. It's been decals since the the late 80s okay man <laughs> i've only heard it called in fact in 2018 is the only time i've ever heard it called decals by you and only you have i ever heard it called decals uh vince if you're watching let me know where you heard it called decals and why do you call them decals 
Is it just because, you know, you want to get under people's skin? <laughs> and you, Deckles, you. All right, so yeah, just a little bit of glue and tacking into place. You'd be surprised, you know. I always thought, I mean, um, oh, speaking of which, white glue in itself. Um, I don't, I don't use the school variety of white glue. I use, you know, Elmer's, but glue all. It, it just has more tackiness to it. All right, now that the leaf litter is down, I'm going to put some shade on top of the leaf litter. Now, this is something you haven't seen. All the other steps, you could see me when I when I put the, the hex wraiths on. I do the exact same steps, so that's why I didn't get into detail this time. But this step I didn't do. This is relatively new, and I'm just, like, putting some spots on, like, one end of each leaf. Again, sorry about the focus. That autofocus is killing me. Uh, and I left it on. I didn't even realize I left it on. I thought it was manual focus, and if it was manual, focus it would have been focused the entire way through so i do do apologize that for that and i said do and do put that together there you go there you go anywho um getting that getting that shade inside those leaves to tie it together as well into the base and uh it's pretty 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 awesome actually very pretty pretty <laughs> um now, something different that I did with this is that I did do, uh, do more of a coppery feel for the armor and the blades. All the blades were just a pale kind of um, a pale uh, burnt metal. And that's how I did that. So that was the color kind of scheme that I wanted to do with that. Again, a little different. Again, pushing myself to the limits. Uh, trying out different shades as well. I, I do like the purple shades over there. I think it's Dragon of Nightshade. Um, not sure. No, Druidchi Violet. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So just playing around with that, trying to get some more purple in the base, just like the cape is, just to just to tie everything together. So this way, you know, the you look at the mini and you'll say, well, this mini is on a base that's completely foreign to it. No, it's part of it. You know, it's part of the process there. Again, some Druidchi Violet. Um, trying to use that shade, getting some fun, which I'm sure you here. So let's let's talk a little about Shade Spire itself. I do want to talk about Shade Spire. Shade Spire is a game. Um, in fact, Shade Spire is in this place called Shaish, which is the realm of the dead, Nakash's realm. Um, you know, it was Shade Spire in itself was a city. Um, uh, it was magic, and it's a merchantile metropolis rising from you know unforgiving earth in the realm of death. AKA Shaiish, and countless of races dwelt within those walls, and together they created artifacts of astonishing beauty and power. The city's most treasured secret was the process of refining this thing called shade glass. And it was a it was a substance in which they can store spiritual essence of the dead for all eternity. They can trap souls in there. Now you may think, oh my goodness, why in the world would anyone want to do that, right? I mean, I wouldn't want to be in an eternity in a shield piece of glass. That is just, that's crazy talk, right? But here's the thing. They were cheating death. And imagine if you could speak to people that were alive millions of years. Like, if, imagine if you could speak to President Lincoln and, and get his advice on things, like today. That would pretty, pretty much be amazing. So, you know, they defied death. Nagash came in and said, um, those are my souls. I'm the Grim Reaper here. I'm the one who's supposed to take the souls. You can't keep them. So he not only punished them, but he trapped them in, in that shade spire forever. And other people wandered into that area and with, you know, different purposes and stuff. Now, these Sapporo guards actually want to fight their way back to Nagash's favor. So they want to, you know, they, they, they say, sorry, Nagash, we'll fight for you. We're my bad. You know, so that's what these guys are all about. Now, Speaking of the green, I had to tie it in somewhere, so I gave it that Scorpina green in the eyes, so this way it can have that glowing eye effect in there, uh, so it could tie it all in together. So, you know, all in all, awesome models. There are a lot of them, <laughs> but awesome models, and I can't wait to play them on the table. They look amazing. Well, I hope you like this video, um, and like, share, and subscribe. Catch you in the outro.
Well, there you have it. The Supreme Guard all painted up, and it'll fit really well in my Legion of Nagash army. Well, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.